Hey guys, this is Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge, and today we're taking a look at this knife. It's Wednesday, so I like to do Wee Wednesday, which means small knives. Well, this knife isn't very long, but it's not small. It's a chunky little knife. A uh, modern take on a Tanto-style blade. Uh, the front edge has got a nice belly to it. The bottom here is fairly straight. And, you know, it's a small G10 handle inset liners. Nice little uh, touch on that backspacer back here with this lanyard hole and persuader. And uh, it's a flipper that has a detent that is, it came straight from heaven. The detent is awesome. So uh, are there any pros? Uh, well, there's lots of pros. Are there any cons on this knife? Yeah, there's some cons too. So stick around. We're going to talk about all of it right now. So here it is, so let's make it so you can read the name, Kubi, right there on the blade. And it's a nice and a small name on there. I like that. On the other side, all you see is this tiny little D2, and that's all the writing you have anywhere on this knife. That's a good thing. I like that an awful lot. So many brands just cover their knives with all kinds of uh, branding. Eh, don't like that so much. Put your brand on it, keep it small, keep it clean, awesome. So here's that blade shape. Let's get a nice good close-up of that thing. Let me refocus this here. There you go. So you can see that edge that they put on there, nice grind. Well, <laughs> it looks like a nice grind. We'll talk about that in detail in just a little while. Uh, so you got a nice belly there. Here's your transition spot right there, and then that flat. Nice drop point up here with a swedge. And it looks like a bead blast. They don't say on the website if that's a bead blast finish or not. It looks like a really fine bead blast. It's kind of cool. It's actually done quite well. We've got a really funky sharpness choil in here. And then we've got a flipper tab. That's a guard that's got jimping all the way around it. That uh, flipper tab is a little bigger than I'd like it to be. Not bad. You can see that they did champ for the edges of that uh, sharpener's choil. Why don't I give you a picture of that right now? So yeah, that's kind of funky how big they made it. So effectively, it's just this part right here where my fingernail is. That's, uh, you know, the sharpener's choil. That's the part that we really want. And uh, you can see how the uh, plunge comes down and the sharpener's choil ends just at the perfect spot. Easy to sharpen this knife for that. We've got a liner lock. Lockup is exactly where I like a brand new knife to be. I think my picture is in this orientation. So the uh, lock here is fully engaged and th there's also a lot of wear life left in it. You can see the recessed liners in there. I'll show you a picture of the knife taken apart in just a few seconds. Uh, we've got a backspacer here made out of stainless steel, flipper tab, flipper tab. The uh, pocket clip is also stainless steel. The liners are stainless steel. These are 420J2. And then we've got C3 stainless steel for this backspacer. There's a lot of budget knives that use those steels that are in the blade and the, you know, I mean, not in the blade, they're in the liner and this backspacer in the pocket clip for their blades. Uh, and those tend to be a little bit too soft, in my opinion. Instead, they've used D2. I've done a little bit of testing on it. I do believe that it is uh, genuine D2, or, you know, the very close Chinese equivalent, the same chemical composition. We do have some titanium on this knife, and that's the little ring that's around this pivot screw. Actually, let's show you the insides of the knife right now. Alignment is great when it's closed. Detent, awesome. No blade play, side to side, up and down. No problems that way at all. Beautiful, beautiful pivot in every way, except for it's a free spinning pivot screw. Uh, in this day and age, uh, you just they just don't need to do that. Please, Kubi and every other brand that's listening, don't make free spinning pivots. They are so frustratingly hard to deal with sometimes. 
if I have to put a screwdriver one on each side to try to loosen that up, you know, I'm just getting ready to hurt myself. So I do use a system where I clamp down the knife and then I can use two screwdrivers, but it shouldn't have to be done. There's so many great ways to make uh, pivot screws without spending a lot of extra money at all and uh, not have them free spinning. Uh, pocket clip is a really good design. A little bit of a fold over right there. Nice, thick, good, strong spring. Holds really well on a, the pair of pants. Uh, knife sticks out. If I'm just talking about the G10, the knife sticks out about 1.6 centimeters, just over half an inch. And then you've got this little bit of steel sticking out a little bit further yet. Not bad at all. Uh, let's put it in a pair of pants and then we'll talk about the screws. So here we go. If we take the knife, put it in there, it immediately goes over the uh, the seam on the pocket right there with that little folded spot. Bounces in, comes all the way down, and there you go. You've got that little bit, 1.6 centimeters, a little over half an inch sticking out. And then, you know, it's a little over an inch if you count this little bit of metal here from the backspacer. So not bad at all. Looks good, feels good, holds well. And you heard that snap. It does hold very, very well indeed. Now these screws, the screws in here are awesome. I am loving these screws. So the screws, you know, have a flat top instead of being rounded. The screw heads are the perfect size there for my screwdrivers to fit in very, very well. Uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, pocket clip screws, they're the traditional round head ones. That's not bad at all, but they're also made very well. I did slip when I was using the screwdriver on there, and it was my screwdriver that got a little bit of a um, damage to it and not the screw. So they've got some nice hard screws here, and I'm really liking that an awful lot. Here's that flipper tab. Look, at, again, you can see all the jumping around. That's pretty big. If you compare it to the rest of the knife and my finger size, that's a big, big pivot. I mean, flipper tab. I wish it was smaller. It doesn't need to be that big. It's a little bit behind the pivot point there, so you can push straight down and have it flip open. <laughs> I was looking at the screen and not at what I was doing, so I missed what I was doing there. Let's do it this way so I can show it a bit better. There you go. See, down works just fine. The light switch method where I'm pulling straight back works very well. You know, all the different methods work very well, and that's because that detent is also ceramic, just like the... Uh, ball bearings in there and everything just fits very well. The fit and finish is awesome on this knife. I'm telling very, very, very good. Now I'm going to talk about the dimensions now. And when I do, I'm also going to talk about this cutting edge and some problems with that. So if you tend to skip over this, uh, you might want to pay attention <laughs> when I'm giving a close up picture that you'll see of the blade edge. So let's get going on all these dimensions. The uh, cutting edge, and I measured straight across from the tip straight over to that part of the blade, right where the sharpener's trial is, 6.25 centimeters, 2.46 inches. And then the length of the blade from the tip to the closest spot on the G10, 6.07 centimeters, 2.39 inches. Uh, Kubi says this thing's got a two and three quarter inch blade. I'm assuming they're measuring from the tip up to this point on the G10 up here. Uh, so the sizes are a little bit different than they suggest. Uh, their total length is just a little bit off as well compared to mine, uh, but not that big of a deal. Almost every knife manufacturer has numbers that are slightly different than what is actual on the stuff going out to the consumer. The uh, blade thickness, here's another one. They say it's four millimeters. It's uh, 3.49. So I'm going to say 3.5 millimeters thick. That's 0.138 inches. So not bad. Three and a half millimeters is good. It's a nice blade here. The blade depth is this measurement here. 2.9 centimeters, 1.15 inches. The thickness of the edge behind the grind is 0.45 millimeters. That's 0 0.0175 inches. So nice and thin behind the grind. And now as you can see on this blade, you can see very little bit of grind on here. There's not an awful lot of grind that you can see. And that's because the grind angle isn't done very well. Most EDC knives like this, uh, they're done at about 20 degrees per side. This one is 23.7 degrees on this side. 
this side here is 31.2 degrees. So we're talking almost 55 degree angle inclusive. And that's why this knife doesn't cut that awful well. It cuts through my filament, the tester that I do, 285 grams of pressure is needed to cut through that filament. A lot of knives that I've been testing these days are way under 200, but this guy didn't do so well. And it's all because of the, uh, the large angle that we have on that cutting edge. It should be around 40 degrees and it's over 50 inclusive if you count both sides. Now, I like less if there's a steel that can handle it, uh, but D2, I like to do it at 20 degrees per side. So when I go to resharpen this knife, I'll show you the before and after pictures in just a minute on how thick that edge looks, how much of a grind you see on the final grind, like the, the part that's on the angle. You only see a little bit, but when I've got it down to 20 degrees, it's going to be higher up on the blade just because the grind angle is more shallow. So here's those pictures. Now let's talk about the handle. The handle length, uh, just the G10, not counting the uh, this steel at the back here. The G10 length of the handle is 9.3 centimeters, 3.66 inches. Uh, the grip area in here where my thumbs are, it's about seven centimeters, about two and three quarter inches, roughly. The handle thickness, we've got handle scales that are rounded over, really nice G10 milling that they've done here, great job on it. And so at the thickest spot, not counting the pocket clip, it is 1.33 centimeters, which is 0.525 inches. Great thickness, love that. The handle depth, this measurement here is 2.99 centimeters, 1.176 inches. And when it's closed, the handle depth, not counting the flipper tab, is 3.49 centimeters, 1.375 inches. So not bad at all. And when the blade is deployed from the tip of the blade to the furthest point on the handle is 16.1 centimeters, which is 6.34 inches. So it's a nice short knife, but it's kind of chunky. And it's got the weight for that. It's 121 grams, 4.25 ounces. So four and a quarter ounces isn't terrible, but it's not that awful great either. Uh, the balance point, let's do it on this side so I can't use the pocket clip to lean on. It's right there. Not bad. I like that. And uh, how much does this knife cost? Well, I got it directly from Kubi. I got the link down below for Kubi Knives. But Kubi Knives has this for 37 US dollars right now. They ship to most of the, the world, but I think that website's targeting uh, North America and Europe. 37 US dollars is roughly 49 Canadian, about 32 and a half euros, about 28 British pounds. That's the rough value. And so that's not bad at all. This is a new knife from Kubi. And uh, I just hope by the time they've done this, when they do the second run, that they'll adjust the grinding, but it's not that big a deal. I really don't mind this grinding that much because I know how to sharpen my knives and I could sharpen it to 20 degrees per side easy squeezy, no problem at all. And that's just a maintenance kind of issue. The things that I can't do myself, like this pivot, you know, I can't put a locking pivot in there, but the, the this pivot doesn't work that badly at all for taking on and off. And the action on it is so awesome. They put in ceramic ball bearings, high quality screws, really good fit and finish on all the work on all the parts, the detent, like I said, it's heaven. I don't have very many knives that have a better detent, and I've got a whole lot of knives that have a worse detent than this knife. So that's awesome. So this knife doesn't violate any of the laws in Canada, and it's beautiful. I like it. It's chunky like me, except for I'm almost six foot tall. This thing's, you know, comparatively a smaller knife than average, and I'm a bigger guy than average. So, but maybe this thing suits me anyways. I like it. It's very useful. It cuts very, very well. I went through boxes, cardboard, without much you know, hesitation. And that's partly because, look at this handle. I can get four fingers on there just barely. My fourth finger, not so much, but my hands are large, bordering on extra large, and yet I can get a good solid grip on this thing. Nice pressure up on the spine here. Oh, that reminds me. The jumping on here, it's helpful, but I wish it was just a little bit more aggressive on uh, the next run that you guys do of this Kubi, 
please make the jimping on here just a little bit more aggressive so that the meat of my thumb can get some more friction on there and make that flipper tab just a tiny bit smaller and get your sharpener guide not to sharpen to such a high angle. Small things to adjust. I really like this knife and I recommend it. You can get it in this green, black, or a desert sand color. $37 all day long is very good. Let's go over the pros and cons one last time. Um, great lanyard hole option. You can use that as a persuader. I didn't talk about that, did I? With the knife closed, you know, get that in your hand and you've got a pressure point activator that can work really well for something much lower than lethal use. Uh, the lanyard hole is great that way. Um, I like that they have their branding nice and small on here. Uh, it's got very good grip for such a short knife. Uh, the body screws are awesome. The detent is wonderful. Uh, the flip action works very well. That's because the detent lockup is solid. Um, alignment's great. Looks are really good. Strong blade tip. It's, it's nice and thick until you get right close to the end here. Nice strong tip there, as I said. The pocket clip performs very well. The G10 is milled wonderfully. Very comfortable. Good access to the lock release. Oh, and the lock release has got some nice uh, jimping on it. Very, very nice. What are the cons? Well, this flipper tab's too big. It should be a little bit smaller. Um, I would like the jimping on the thumb rest to be different. And the bigger one for me, if you don't change anything else, put in a locking pivot screw. I really, really recommend locked pivot screws instead of free spinning ones. So there you go. That's the knife. I really like it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Thanks for your support. To my Patreon supporters, you guys are awesome. It really does make a big difference that you guys help me out with your support. And remember, everybody, cut towards your chum, not your thumb.